1 John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and she unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Tonight, we are going to be approaching the Lord, and ask that there will be a showing, there will be an unveiling. And on the other hand, we are going to be asking the Lord that we are helped into sight, into accurate perception, into understanding. John was saying in the book of John, chapter 1, he was saying that the word became flesh and we became this glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Others may see him as flesh, but they beheld him. They beheld him. Tonight, can we ask the Lord that there will be an unveiling? And by his spirit, we are helped into accurate perception. We see him as we as he is. We see him as he is. The testimonies that they have seen, they have heard, they have handled. For it was because he was manifested unto them. Tonight, oh Lord, we ask for an unveiling. We ask for an unveiling. We ask for an unveiling. And that we are helped into understanding. We are helped to see Alama Suberaviati Asiba Lateta Akemo Suberakako Shatem Via Siba Lata Ekamo Subelevianti Kabara Subaba Babaraka Bentiasa Kema Shatem Via Subele Kabara Subeleviatata Ekoma Subele Kabaraqua Shete Kabara Siata Akema Subelevianti Kabara Suate Koma Subele Kabara Shate Kambia Satata Rogo badia subele vianti kabara swatete vina siba la kabara shata. We ask tonight that there will be an unveiling. Ekamo subele vianti kabara siata. Let life be manifested unto us. Ekoma subele vianti kabara swate. Eruaga be shate via siba la tata. Makakwa tembora swa bele vianti kabara sha. Ekoma swa bele tete tete. Raga be siya bendia kabara sha. There's a sight that can keep us coming. I'm a subeleviante kabarasata. Eko ma subeleviante kabarasata. Eko asi bam bam barakatwasa. An unveiling. E subeleviante a subarakakwashete. Repete kebere swatenti a viasata. Rekabia shota kabarasata. Ela ma swate. Rekaba ba 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 barakatwashete. Vani asi balakatia setete. We come tonight that we may come to accurate perception. Show us yourself. Show us yourself. Show us yourself. Alessia Ben Diashata. Akabaroswate Kabaraswate. Rakabembe Swate. Rakababaraka Wasete. Evia Setente. An unveiling. Eyemo subele vianti asata, rakabe swate via sumele viatata, rakabe asata, ekwa kabera swate, elbows into sight, ekambia subele viate, arwa sabem bembe, rakaba shata, rakabe siatata, ekandi asata, akwa karesi atata, ivia siatata, rakaba mbesi atata. Unveil yourself. E masumbe le fiata. E kuavandi a setete. Roka ba 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 ba. A ke fiata. Raka setente. E rakwa shata. E kuwa sate. Aroma siabe le keberete. That we will hear and see. We will touch. We will handle. We will embody and we will become. Alexia te. Shitaba, Eswara take a fete kewa, Ayataka go shapampai, Eswata take a go sotobiata, Eko kabata sha. We acknowledge you, God. We acknowledge you, God. We acknowledge you, God. The quickness spirit of God, the revelation of God. We acknowledge Makose Kata Kwata Erukabia 
An offering. Scripture says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase. Also, we will be declaring, we'll be declaring this proclamation as displayed on the screen at the count of three. One, two, three. It is time to give to our God who is the Lord. Giving time is honor time. And honor time is lifting time. Tonight, God seeks honor. So we respond by giving, knowing that he deserves it and that it will be greatly rewarded. So, as I give today, God is honored and I am greatly rewarded. So, I give gratefully, honorably, cheerfully, and with the expectation that a reward will come. In Jesus' name, amen. Also, we acknowledge everyone that has partnered with God in the ARC project. We say, the Lord bless you greatly. We also admonish and encourage that more givings be done to the end that the ARC finds fulfillment. And I pray, we pray that the Lord bless you greatly in return in Jesus name the account details for both the Naira and dollar account are displayed on the screen the Lord bless you Amen who is like you Lord in all the earth much less love and beauty endless worth Nothing in this world Nothing in this world Satisfy Jesus you are the cup Jesus you are the cup That will run dry I see Who is like you Lord Who is like you Lord In all the earth Much less love and beauty And less glory
Jesus, you are raising a sound to the Holy Ghost tonight. The scripture says that I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not high, Christ that liveth in me. And the life that we live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself for us. Jesus Christ dwells in us by His Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. It's the evidence of our salvation. And so that is why we are raising a sound tonight. I want us to join us as we raise the sound tonight. Oh, precious Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you in this place tonight. Hey, Holy Ghost, upon the mountain, you are the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Upon the mountain, you are the Holy Ghost. The Spirit that dwells in us. Upon the mountain, you are you Holy Ghost
Rate banana noria, Ratani skipper had the comifan. There's no need to be loved. The move must begin from here. It must begin from here. It must begin from here. My mokaba ma miska pelevata, omenan tamreska beba. By before the tasata, move here, move here, move here. Holy Ghost, begin from within. Baseta baba batai, esoma baba tendos infalate na tebrata ndesa bebate. Kapa me balaba kame somen babra teno mate. Mamete sabokada, baba pe babra vatata ne, bate la te mambala ko, rata na nonse, rata te baba datama, mata te kapa paya, rata basi bala ata na baba bo, eka kapa baba bati baba takata ta, rata kapa sete ne meke te ko, eta te ya, meka pika baba kato ta kato ta kato rakiata, esa ta baba bo, esa ta baba ka. Fika para para kata kata taya, eta ta pa 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 tua ta ta, zeka pe pa te, enta kata ta me balante, e pa kandria ta pa ta, move within me, move within me, oh kapa me bombosa, seka bambara te kapote. Sete mantale tato, etuan tato, etuan tato, etuan tato, kante tua sata, e rakate bebo, e kompe pilanda kava matande, e kamemba sailom. Oh, begin from here. Begin from here. Sata kama me kabariata, you dwell here. You dwell here. In Santa Nataria Tapa, a Roman of the Sentope, a funny Tame Matele Stato, by Santa Paparaton. Maranatos. In the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now I don't know if the choir knows this song it's 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 the song that is playing in my spirit I can't fully grasp it I think it's Pastor Chintok's song it has scepter of the No, no, no. Something the scepter of the city of God. What's the full song? Okay, somebody should lead the song. Oh, you don't know the song? Hey. Okay. So, do you want to find the song? I'll need the song maybe subsequently. It's the Holy Ghost, it's the Holy Ghost something custodian of the mysteries of God, scepter of the secret of God. Okay. Be seated. Be seated. So let the choir look for that song. I need, I'll need the song subsequently. Ah. I wait. I wait. I wait on you. I wait. I wait, I wait on you. Father, I wait on you. I wait on you. Father, I wait on you. I wait on you. And I it is to the authenticity of your indwelling many have received you as Lord and Savior 10 years 20 years but the movements of our hearts still do not mirror your realities and we're asking Lord that this series will occasion the emergence of a new man we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. If God answers that my prayer, then everyone that collides with his words will be new. You will not assume newness. You will exhibit newness. 
So I, I'm trusting him that he will answer. I, I'm, I'm trusting him. I, I don't know how many of you see yourself in the reality of those last lines of my prayers. That there is still a sound in you. There are still desires in you that are not Christ's desires. How many people have that struggle? The design of the indwelling is that total exchange becomes possible. That your desires are substituted. That your cravings are substituted. That if you ever vocalize your wants, it will mirror what he wants. When we sing song, songs like, let me want what you want, you know that song? Let me want what you want. Oh my dear Lord. It's the cry of someone who has not fully apprehended. It's that we have found out that within us, there's this a sound that is not him. And um, it shouldn't be like that for five years. So we want to trust Jesus. But as we are exposed to the revelation of his word, we are going to read a lot of verses of scriptures. Because in studying for this series, I had to do some study. God led me around a little. I, I began to cry out. I began to cry out. Because my studies, um, I'm just trying to lead you on a little before we start. My studies have revealed that living a life that is totally sold out to the Christ is a possibility. The, the Bible gives us a clear manual. All that will be required is that you are willing. Is that you are willing. If you believe that because you went to the Android store, what, what do they call that? It's a Google Play Store. That when you went to the Google Play Store, you downloaded WhatsApp to your phone. And that you don't need any intelligence to run WhatsApp. Once you click that green icon, it begins to operate. When you send messages on WhatsApp, how many of us know how the messages are transferred? You just click send and after a while if your friend does not respond you begin to fight didn't you get my message you did not bother yourself with the dynamics of the of message sending if human beings can create a self-running system like that if in the day you gave your life to christ the holy spirit was downloaded into a fellowship with your spirit then we are struggling too much It should be self run WhatsApp only has challenges if there's a virus. And we want to see if there are inhibiting viruses that men can install that can checkmate the movements of the Holy Spirit. If we take those viruses out of the way, then things will work. Things will work. It's been a very busy week. Very busy. Traveled on Wednesday morning. I had two sessions in Ibejuleki. I'm not sure they recorded my sessions. So I'll trust God if they didn't record to revisit them. Let me know how far with the Lord one. Eh? This week, or should I die? So in the Lord we had, I first had four sessions in one conference. It was on the Joshua generation. Lamde was with me. Ah, Timo is around too. Timo was with me. And Jesus showed us mercy. And yesterday evening I went for a third conference. Preach. I, I wanted to preach, but I could not preach because uh, the burden in that location was too heavy. Uh, uh, it's, the, 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 the theme of the conference was the secret place, but they wanted this, a fire conference inside the secret place. And I, I perceived that life was more needed than fire. But may God give you understanding. So I promised them that they should invite me again. Not for an impartation service. And because God, God came. Home. God came, but I asked them to invite me for a teaching service. Let's start from what is salvation. And let us join. Let us join. Let us join. 
I have a false charge for this service. And then um, we will go into the business of the day. Let me begin this way before we go and look at a few scriptures to validate what I am about to say. As you mature in God, now Jerry, I need you to regulate this thing because my voice is, is almost out. By God's grace, on Tuesday, I will be in the city of Adwekiti. Have a session. So if you are listening to us and in Adwekiti, please be with my friend, Apostle Akim, have a ministry with him. Um, and then we're around for the week. We need to rest a little before we run again. The call of the believer is assumed to be many things. And the time has come for us to reevaluate the, the weight of our call as believers. Based on one of the statements made by one of my teachers, I listened to him a lot. The prophet, Emmanuel. Makandiwa. He says that the God that you know is the one that was introduced to you. As such, if the one who brings the word of God to you is a or, or who brings the knowledge of God to you is economical with truth or is a liar. There are those who outrightly misrepresent God by saying that God is what he is not there are those who incompletely try, um, represent God it's still a pseudo form of misrepresentation but they bring an incomplete introduction of God for example you can build a a fortress around the loving nature of God that when it is overstressed, you bring up the harvest of a people who are lascivious. Because they do not understand that there was a transition in the fulfillment of covenants. Even though the old covenant and the new covenant are lettered the same way. Are you with me? I mean, if you read the terms of the old covenant and the new covenant, they are the same way. It is still writing my laws in your heart. Are you with me? Yes. Ah. I don't like this. Who okay, can believe that the covenants are totally different? Do we still, based on the new legal system, do we kill? Are we, are we at liberty to commit fornication or adultery? Are we at liberty to, to dishonor our parents? Are we at liberty to serve any other God apart from the Lord? Are you at liberty to have in the corner of your room a graven image? It means that the Mosaic laws were not cancelled. God's original mandate was that those laws not be read. They were supposed to be etched on the human heart. So that by a law in the heart, you'll be able to function like Abel without going to a school of sacrifices to offer unto God a sacrifice that is acceptable without a legal system. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Ah, see, see, I'll be enjoying God. Don't, don't come and do this thing. God is still, our kingdom is still a legalistic kingdom. And in case you don't like that word, the kingdom was shaped before you came are you with me there's no kingdom without rules when God was putting together his kingdom you were not there and so you could not have said if you were there maybe you would have said Lord no rules all man leads to himself he loses his essence as a kingdom if it's no longer a kingdom of rules but you see 
We are not running with stone tablets. We are running with a law in your heart. We should not be telling you not to fornicate. It should be there. When you accepted Jesus into your heart, what did you accept him as? I hope I will not need to do a refresher course before my teaching. What did you accept him as? Okay, can you can you function with a Lord without rules? He owns you. That's how he saved you. If he does not own you, you don't belong to him. Are you with me? And you cannot be a Lord without rules. Your Lordship is, is weak. Because Lordship means that there's some bit of governance. No, not even bit. There's a whole lot of governance that is in place. A Lord is a ruler. And there's no ruler without without rules amen yeah. uh, the earlier you understand the shape of the kingdom so jerry one of my end of year sermons will be the shape of the kingdom of god you want to know what the kingdom looks like so that you will know if you have been functioning in the kingdom or outside the kingdom the shape or the shapes put an s i'll do like seven to eight different things to define what the kingdom of God looks like. Uh, but since you are not receiving what I'm bringing, um, I will go straight to what I want to say. That the pastor or the brother or the sister that stood on the altar in the day that you gave your life to Christ, baited you into the kingdom by certain words. I expect that one of the things that he used as bait was to advertise a face of God to you even though God has many faces if that face is the only face that you know God may have been misrepresented in your heart and so your call as a believer may be wrong some believers believe that their call is a call to enjoy that God is a workman who is obsessed with delivering enjoyment and so any aspect of their Christian work that does not bring enjoyment to the soul is not from God. E.g. fasting. No, that, 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 me, me, I, I must eat. If it's possible to eat 10 times a day, I must eat 10 times a day because fasting hurts the soul. Am I right? You're walking on the road and your friend says, have I bought anything for you before? You say no. Say today, I give you cold stone ice cream. And you started out fasting. Ah! A fight will start in your heart. Say, take it somewhere where you come on fasting. So you follow your friend, and somebody meets you and says, Ah, what's your name again? And says, Peter, but you said you are fasting. Say, Ah, there's life. So we can do it tomorrow. If you stay fasting, and you know, cold stone cannot be preserved. Abby, you can put it in a nylon bag and say, we'll drink it tomorrow morning. You know, I wish you have friends who say, if you don't have it today, don't, don't ask me again. Then you will see that your heart is hot. If what you received was a God, a God who is obsessed with making people enjoy, you will think it's the devil who initiated the fast. Who wants to make you miss the enjoyment of this thing? Because if it is a God who just makes you enjoy, you will sleep with everybody and you will think you are right because of the pleasure that you get. Are you with me? You will drink everything that can be ingested because you think that if it is good and your definition of good will be pleasure, it is God. So to start watching films from 7 p.m. and to finish at 6 a.m. will not be wrong for you because if your body likes it, it is from God. You will marry what you like and not what you need because it is from God. You will study the course that, that suits you. Say, so let, let me study food tech. Or there's food and nutrition or food science 
let me just do something around food because that's what I like as a minister you will go only to the places where you are promised to sleep on a waterbed the advantage of a waterbed is that even if it's snowing outside you can regulate the temperature of your bed that no to go to a learning to preach for you Peter you you will require that you go and look for a Range Rover spot because you must you want the pleasure of sitting in that car the problem is that the God that was introduced to you is obsessed with making people enjoy it's an enjoyment of his when we begin to preach the damage that the cross must do to your life so that you can be an accurate servant of Jesus you will resist our sermons and you will tell us that it's because we have wrong Christian background that's why we are not obsessed with enjoyment let me not go further the God that was introduced to you is the God that you know and the call that was used to initiate your entrance into the kingdom if you don't labor for that maybe the maybe your definition of the call of the believer but the call of the believer is designed to express along many lines my first instruction for this service i have titled it by the mercy of god midwives for a new nation i was excited i was you know had quite some time to chat with my spiritual father the apostle Arome, two days ago yesterday even this morning even this morning and i was excited when i saw his opening emphasis at the convergence lagos it, that someone is worth listening to i would borrow one or two of one of the verses that he used or one or two to support my motion even though i have a couple of my own To the one who learned well the call of the believer captures the reality one of living for god and if you want you can enlarge this living call as living for god and living unto god living for god it means you are representing your your, your life is a representation of god and living unto God means that your life is directed at pleasing God. Two, our call as believers captures the call to serve God. It introduces God as a father, as a master, as a lord, as a king. And we as his sons, as his subjects, as his servants. And like Paul would say, as his bond servants. The word bond servant is a subtle way to call yourself a slave. I know you don't like that name. Bless him. Do you like that name? You are a slave of God. Well, you are. You were bought. You were bought with a price. Sons are not really bought. Are you with me? Yes. I mean surface level sons are born slaves are bought but you're buying your the transaction that bought you was a birthing that's why you are a son are you with me hmm. oh jesus help me oh but don't play again pray for 10 minutes and join me you are playing well but we need to operate at a very high place and that's where i've been teaching from Okay, do five minutes. You are, you are my friend now, so you should know what to do. Do five minutes. I'm saying that you were bought. Normally, only slaves are bought. But when God transacted that by, his, by the blood of the Christ, that transaction brought you into more than slavery. It was a legal transaction that ensured that your rights were not limited to the rights of a slave the rights that you were exposed to are the rights of a son so in romans chapter 8 verse 15 the bible says we have not received the spirit that maketh us a slave again to fear but the spirit of adoption 
and because of the nature of the spirit that you received you can cry Abba Father are you with me good so that's what I'm trying to say is there so it's like a slave crying out father because when the slave was bought an installation happened a spirit was installed it's not normal to have the spirit of a son installed in a slave but because the spirit of the son was installed in us we were upgraded into sonship by adoption but keep it in your mind that you were saved so that you can serve him are you with me mm. okay so the call captures the reality to serve god the call captures the reality to reign on behalf of god the call captures the reality to speak on behalf of god and many more realities some believe i do too that the call also captures the reality of worshiping god of um what else giving to god many things but if you seek to bring all of these calls together trying to congregate them around their purpose and not the activity you will find out that the basic call or the basic expression of the call of the believer is a call to partner with god if you live well what you will be doing is living a witness of god in the territory is partnering with god because god wants to be seen so if you live his life he will be seen you are working with him are you with me if you worship god somebody in the choir if you stand up and you raise a cry when god is worshiped worship is not an end there's always a feedback the feedback is that the dimension of god that you touch in worship becomes available it means that if God wants a dimension of his person to be available, he will instigate worship in a worshiper. So as you lift up your cry, you are opening up the, the path for the descent of what God wants to be in the earth. You are still a partner. Are you with me? You are doing something so that what God wants to be done can find expression. Are you with me? If you begin to serve God, the service of God essentially is to occasion the knowing of the essences of God. That's why we serve Him. It's not just so that we can get a reward. The word serve means that you should function under the in, um, instruction or by the intention of one to please that person. To serve also means to give something. Am I right? If I say Peter is serving me, you may be carrying my Bible. I can also say Peter serve me food. Are you with me? So, in ministry, we do things that bring God pleasure. But in ministry, we also minister God. We give God to the people. It's still partnership. Are you with me? You still don't understand. Okay, let's sing a song. Amen. What was that song we sang yesterday? That was a song I used to. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Make sure you are singing. We want to travel. To receive your Thank you, Jesus. For the One more time. And thou art worthy, O Lord. Thou art worthy, O Lord.
the human structure is designed to be built around a particular bone what bone is that what bone is that your spinal cord your spinal your spine that's your vertebrae column am i okay with that anybody who has um another opinion <gasps> Jesus. Kai, kai, kai. Okay. Let's go with this thought. Your human structure is designed to be built around your vertebrae column. It means if you want to give expression, if you take away your vertebrae column, you, your, your, the totality of your being, your uprightness will be lost. Your ability to bend will be lost. Many things are going to be lost if we tamper with your vertebrae column. Your ability to move, am I right? Will be lost. We might need to look for another name to define you. You would your your existence will attract the use of an adjective to define you, and it will not be because you consciously chose to adopt that adjective it will be because you lost your spine for example whatever a christian knows or markets as knowledge that is not built around the spine called kingdom life will not make him a christian if you know power but your the power that you know is not hooked into the spine called kingdom you will ultimately abuse what you have if it's grace that you know that's the that's the hub of the hyper grace movement that they understand the concept of grace but the grace that they understand is not hooked into the spine called kingdom are you with me so living anyhow is not captured in kingdom life because there's a king it means there are rules so you're in from your soul you cannot self-determine what is right so to claim that once your spirit is saved whatever happens in your body is not god's business is a lie because the bible says that you were bought with a price therefore honor god not only in your spirit but also in your body that is whose that is the lord's i've shared with us in this house that jesus died three deaths he died in his spirit he died in his soul he died in his body so the redemptive essence of the christ is supposed to affect your spirit your soul and your body you cannot claim to have come into the perfected expressions of salvation if your body looks like a harlot but you speak in tongues you are wrong so say to your neighbor you are wrong if what you drink or what you smoke is governed from your soul and you claim that no tell me to speak in the language of power and i can make a few lines or bring the bible and see if i can explain it and you explain it you see you have not touched the full import of salvation because what enters your mouth must be governed by the spirit that is within you the spirit of madness ensures that for a madman how much more the holy ghost he should be able to more ensure it the spirit of madness is a dressing is a clothing spirit are you with me the spirit of madness has perspective powers it communicates the perspective of the madman the spirit of madness is a directional spirit it tells the madman where to go it tells the madman where to sleep it it you know designs the habitat of the madman if you now tell us that anywhere your heart wants you to go you can go to and it doesn't affect your nature as being a believer you are wrong because when a spirit dwells within it dwells to govern it doesn't dwell just to be there are you with me just as kingdom is or kingdom life is the spine for all doctrine as a matter of fact the gospel of the kingdom is the mother of all gospels because every other gospel finds expression within the context of the gospel of the kingdom in that same way i am saying that the spine 
of the call of the believer is the call to partner with God there is, an, there is an assignment that God wants to fulfill in our world and in his will he has deemed it fit that man becomes the partner with whom he will get that labor done to live otherwise will be to live contrary to your ordination it will be living a life that does not strike any chord in God's realm it means it's a life that will attract no rewards from God. It will live by general mercies. But on the last day, that kind of life will not be known. May God give you understanding. When I say that the spine is partnering with God, we must understand that man, it was not given to man to initiate labor. God in this partnership is the initiator. If it begins in time, then it will likely not attract the energies of the eternal one. So we were called to join into labors that began from the realm of God. A procession began from heaven. And your call is to jump in in your own earthly existence. So do what God will have you do so that you can advance what God is doing. And when you have done your own, you stop. It's like a relay quartet. God is the first leg. It begins with him. So your Bible opens with the lines in the in the beginning who? Oh, was in the, it was in the beginning blessed. Or do you want? Or wait me. Or in the beginning sunshine. Sunshine, you didn't come early. You didn't come on day one, have you? And there was no sun on day one. Do you understand what I'm saying? There was no sunshine on day one. When God said, let there be light, it was not the light of the sun. So you are not the beginning. God is like the one who initiates the race. He's the one who adopts the lane. He's the one who picks up a baiting. The moves of God begin in God. They don't begin in men. If it is a move that began in men, then it is no longer a move of God. It is the move of a man. It begins in God. And what qualifies you to... to uh, what qualifies your life to be an accurate life is that you received this betting to run on the lane that god has chosen are you with me so you are not at liberty to be creative in destiny destiny is not crafted it is received and a man adheres to the rules that governs it so that when you are done with your second leg what you do is to find Belumi and say take run if he leaves the lane then all of us will have run in vain it means there are many things that began in God that have not found fulfillment because a man who began to run in time decided to live by a different set of rules. When God finds an accurate man, it means that move will start from the point of derailing. It's sad. It's sad. I want every word that I'm speaking tonight to stay in your heart because the call I want to make is a simple one. I, my assignment is to retreat the summons to pray for our nation that's the simple assignment that i have that's why i'm building all of these things let's go further a little bit more we're almost there now we are not initiators god is our labor is to see that the desires as initiated in god and empowered by god find expression in the earth can I say that again? Every intention, every desire that is initiated in God is gifted the supply of capacity to see them come to pass. The job of a man is to find the desires of God and if he aligns with that desire, he is empowered to birth that desire in the earth realm. Whatever it is. The man Elijah, for example, you know his story there was a time in israel when the marriage between a jewish king or an israelite king ahab 
and the daughter of the priest of a strange god by the name Jezebel had occasioned the departure of the nation of Israel from their path of travel. What it meant was that the move of God that Israel was supposed to fulfill in the earth could no longer be fulfilled. Because now Israel was still worshipping but worshipping on another lane. And so what God decided to do was that he went to their last point of the railing and then a man seemingly stepped out of the realm of the spirit. Seemingly. Somebody says seemingly. Don't go around saying Reverend said Elijah stepped out of the realm of the spirit. I'm just saying that his introduction into the happenings in Israel was sort of was sort of sudden. He was a man who was not gifted antecedents. The name of his father was mentioned. He has brothers, he has sisters. He was a man who appeared to the order of Melchizedek. You see, when you are trying to explain, because I, I did some bit of lecture on this Melchizedek thing with one of my brothers on the phone last week. He had gone to listen to somebody who thought that uh, Melchizedek was Christ. And how that his name, so, so they broke the name into pieces. That there's Melchi and there's Zedek. That he was the king of righteousness. I agree. That that's the meaning of his name. The Bible said in Hebrews that he had no father and mother. What the writer was saying was that his parenthood was not referenced. And it was for a purpose. It was so that you will be able to hallow the order that he represents. So I told the young man, if you say it was Christ, Jesus had mother. Abi, did Jesus not have mother? And so it means having no father or mother does not make you Jesus. He was uh you put do types and shadows now. There's a someone one one of the sisters at a revival hall preached during the week. She was she was teaching types and shadows. My God, she I mean um, Apostle Edu's ministry. She handled it well during this year, 50 days of Pentecost. I sat down to listen to the sermon. It was Bible study that morning, and she handled it well. Types and shadows. So Jesus was not Melchizedek. If not, God will have said to Jesus. In Psalm 110 verse 4. Thou art Melchizedek. He said thou art a priest. After the order of. It means Melchizedek opened an order of priesthood. And your priesthood is captured within the context of that order of priesthood. You are not like Aaron. Are you with me? So I advise. So, so anyway. I will tell you the rest of the story because. I know the person has been listening to some of you know and if you listen to that person you will create a spooky thing out of physical out of straightforward things so I told the young man what God means is what he wrote down are you with me don't 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 in thinking scriptures we use scriptures to think scriptures eh? we don't use our mind to reason scriptures. We reason scriptures by scriptures. That's how the apostles reason scriptures. That if people are confused, what you produce is another scripture, not something spooky. Amen. Oh. You know, some people are looking for plenty of things. They think it is by sounding intelligent that the Christian life is lived. They don't understand that the proof of the Christian life is not what you can say is who you are are you with me so that if they tie our mouths the street is not supposed to lack witness that we are christians that's why we're studying the indwelling christ to show that if a time comes when they don't allow us to come to church again even if we don't identify with a church building the world will not be in doubt that we are different and if they trace long enough they will end with the man jesus the christ so I advised him Read your Bible, love Jesus. Don't crave to teach what nobody has taught before. Because there's a stream in the body of Christ in Nigeria that they love to say things that nobody say. I'm not permitted to talk about it. They always have new things. 
to say. Don't look for what is not lost. May God be merciful, give you understanding. So, our labor is to partner with discovered intentions in God and even in laboring we are not left alone because every desire every intention of God is allocated the essence of God and empowerment so if I tell blessing please blend pepper I will need to have produced something that can make you blend pepper I will not say to you blessing speak and let them hear in legal field I will, if I want you to do that I will gift you a public address system that can influence what is happening there God has not never sent a man without empowering the man if there is any assignment that you think you have received from God and you are struggling to do um, there are two things that possibly happened one that it was not God you heard and so there's no allocation for the race that you are running two is that you heard God but you refuse to obey the injunction tarry until you be endued if it's the second one is easier it just means you have to go back to the place of commissioning and wait until the empowerment comes but if it's the first one be humble enough to admit that i sent myself on an errand and go back to ground zero and wait till you are instructed amen, amen. awesome two verses of scripture so that we can run my teaching is supposed to start by six o'clock i can't finish today and i plan not to finish today so relax Psalms chapter 119. There are two very commonly used verses in AWC. Psalms chapter 119, verse 89. Midwives, that's what we're studying of the new nation. Lamed. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, thy word is is settled in heaven it suggests that before the communications of God as utterances are heard in the earth they have been given a foundation for oppression in God's realm so if God says I will bless you the heavenly structures that will distribute the blessing have already been put in place so we can say to Nigeria that because God has said to us that a new Nigeria will emerge the structures heavenly structures that will make for a new Nigeria were in place before you heard God are you with me so even though prophecy gives us the privilege to know what is ahead prophecy in actual fact gives us the privilege to know what is ahead in time and not what is ahead in heaven because whatever we hear in the earth as prophets has already been perfected in God's dimension God does not speak and goes to work he speaks because he has finished work are you with me forever O Lord thy word is settled in heaven where do we live in what dimension is Nigeria located it means that when God speaks over a nation, the word does not find settlement because God has spoken it. The word hangs. Structures need to be built so that that word can be fulfilled. Another verse of scripture. Commonly used also Psalms chapter 115 verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. These are two causal realms, two realms in which councils are put together. Two realms in which concepts become councils, perfected as councils and transported to the earth. It means God can say, okay, what do I want to do in Nigeria? I want a new nation. I want a righteous nation. I want 
a safe nation those are concepts in God the concept of safety the concept of righteousness the concept of newness and what God does is that he fuses all of them together and he exports them into the earth as a council I will establish a new regime in your nation if you engage the council you will see safety you will see newness you will see righteousness but what i just said now i will establish a new regime or a new set of experiences in your nation that is the council but a council is a congregation of many concepts i'm saying that in those first two dimensions in the heaven and the heavens it's in those locations that concepts are fused together to become councils but the bible says that in the earth he has given the earth to who the children of men god is the one that governs the conceptualization the realms of conceptualization god is the one who governs the realms where councils are put together earth which is where men are in charge of is the place where things happen so those two realms are causal realms our own realm is a manifestation based realm are you with me so everything you see in the earth is as a result of the things that were determined in the other two realms the heaven even the heavens are the lords but the earth had he given the word there is assigned it means in the offering of the earth to men god gave earth to men by responsibility so there is a measure of accountability that god expects from every one of us and that's why we've been speaking about taking responsibility territorially for homes for institutions for establishments for church groups for cities for nations even for continents because in the giving of the earth god gave so that men can be accountable if anything goes wrong in the earth stop blaming god it's because a man did not show up in responsibility and when god wants to judge not everybody suffers he goes straight for the one who is accountable for that thing you know when we're young or when you were young there's a possibility that when your maybe your mom starts frying fish for example and somebody calls her come to the junction so as she's leaving she says let's use baby she says baby Eja, you brother you know but baby was watching korean movie and there were five do you watch korean movies you don't like them at all what do you watch okay american film so you were watching an american film and there, were, there are five of you in the house but what she said was baby so everybody sits and continues to watch the movie and somebody nudges you and says bring me the fish and say ah you don't want me to enjoy the movie so you you begin to function with a common reality forgetting that you had an allocation in responsibility when mommy comes and she says ah you know you can be so engrossed in a film that the movie creates an atmosphere an atmosphere that not only dulls your sight but also dulls your ability to smell and she comes and says there may even be smoke in the house you won't see it oh yes it depends on how well you have mastered focus and then she comes and says the fish is burning and you say ha, ha, ha. you now say ah sorry all of us were watching do you know that all of us will not be punished only the one who was assigned responsibility it means while you feel all of us are living the same way you need to pay attention to your own allocation because if you are allotted portion is infringed upon by the enemy god will hold you responsible and not all of us i was sharing to them in in Lauren on friday night how that um when moses died i was teaching on the joshua generation um in pursuit of inheritance 
that when Moses died, the space that Moses, you know, Moses was serving God. Joshua was not serving God. Joshua was like a bishop at BOA. He was called to serve who? Moses. Because Moses was called God's servant. God said it by himself. Moses, my servant, is dead. That's Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1. Joshua was called Moses' servant. So that's who he was serving by scriptures. But immediately Moses died, God said, my servant is dead. Now you arise and take these people into the promised land. It means that immediately Moses died, Joshua had an upgrade in service. He had been faithful with little, now he was brought into much. He was the new man. He moved into the space of Moses. Abi? So I said something. I said before you begin to run around trying to claim things. You know, everybody wants everybody's mantle. In pursuit of inheritance, you must know who you were called to replace. Everybody wants Papa last mantle to do which work? To be watching football. You want Papa last mantle to be doing morning devotion. If you will get Baba the last man to, you will be the continuation of his essence. So, Pelumi, who were you called to inherit? If not, you will live a life, you will have an identity that is not captured in the move of God. Because God operates or upgrades a new generation because there's a void in the old one. So, we have to pray that night for revelation. I know, believe it or not, I don't attend CNS church. But I know that I was one of those who were called to inherit Baba. I know. That the dimensions of his purity, the dimensions of his addiction to the word of God, the dimensions of his potency, the dimensions of his yieldedness, his dedication to a fasted church. You see, Nigeria has been given to us. That's where I'm going. In the realms where, where concepts become councils, a council has been deposited over our nation and we have been privileged as we prayed here and in many other places where people prayed to know that there's new in the bag for the nation Nigeria. We are currently like a nation pregnant and whatever hardness that is happening now um, are actually the things that are associated with pregnancy. It's not all women, but some women have what they call morning sickness. For some, it could be it could be aggravated. For some, it's a lot of fever, a lot of vomiting. Some people just walk through pregnancy like you know, you don't even know they are due. And may God give you that grace. You know, some people from about three months can't cook again. Yeah. My wife cooked even the day we went to the hospital. She was still cooking. I would say she said say no I'm fine now my, I'm fine now my wife was still praying long only that she could not stand so she found the easiest posture of lying on her side so that the baby would be on the ground and then she would run in, uh, in hours like that some people can't pray well again after three months may God give you grace let your body be used to certain things so that when that time comes everything will adjust you know if you become pregnant before you start learning prayer there's grace there's grace and God is always better in the next generation it means you'll be better in your own time in the name of Jesus so we are a people of responsibility our nation is currently like a pregnant nation much of the discomfort that we are going through now have to do with the pregnancy when God spoke, a baby, a new nation, was deposited. But you see, it's not everybody that is pregnant that gives birth. And I do not have the bandwidth of knowledge to be able to bring to us all the possibilities that can be occasioned so that pregnancy is not fully delivered. But you see, sometimes the mother dies. Are you with me? And the baby dies. Sometimes the mother survives and the baby dies. 
sometimes the mother leaves sometimes the mother dies and the baby leaves are you with me sometimes both of them well, well, the good thing is that both of them leave sometimes the baby does not does not mature fully and is born prematurely and leaves many times if it's a girl the girls are stronger at birth Abby? okay they've not told you that the girls are stronger at birth a premature girl has a greater tendency to survive than a premature boy it's when the boys grow up that uh, they have energy i don't know what 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 but but ladies generally even intellectually i think many of them are more matured they mature faster than the boys uh, you know when you were three when you were when you were ten you were still playing ball if you grew up in the village when you were seven you still be wearing pants and be running around at two years old the baby is already a baby girl's already baiting her door there's already motherhood in her head they are 30 year olds you don't know anything about fatherhood they still live for themselves at age three the baby girl is already backing the baby she's already mixing sand and trying to put it into the baby's mouth there's already motherhood in her head the boys may god give you understanding well maybe i should sleep in this body that i have slept in before have you found out that there are many more there are more ladies meetings than males meetings even in church there's always sisters 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 and then when it's married time the brothers who were not taught marry the ladies who have labored with god ah, for me, so we must be responsible we must make sure that they grow together all right this responsibility that i'm trying to pull out of this verse is because god has heard our prayer and let me quote my spiritual father one of the things that you have seen in nigeria you have you have heard of the two million man march the one million man march sometimes in the core of the north it means that hope has started rising in our nation the average Nigerian youth believes that they can topple the government now. They believe if, if they allow us to go to the polls, wicked men will not come back. Are you with me? Eh, you see, but it's just like a woman who starts buying cloth. She buys what they call the pran. She buys a walker. And they are saying, ah, you have children? You say, no, see, see, see. So there are structures that she begins to put in place. She might create a baby's room and those who understand colors know that you don't paint a baby's room dark brown. Intelligence wise, your baby may end up being dull. Yes, your baby will be largely melancholic. Very terrible mood swings. Your baby may tend towards depression. Even as adult as you are, if you paint the wall of your room dark brown, you will live a depressed life yes colors affect emotions i studied them a little when i was in construction every tree or every food logo has red inside it yes or no because red creates it it it, it engenders strong appetite even god ensured it that pepper is red so they are, they are, they are cool colors pink sky blue you know nice colors like that so that the, the baby is the baby is alive so she begins to paint the wall and she looks for you know doll pictures that have dolls in them stickers that can get the baby excited she begins to put them together but it's not everybody that prepares like that that ends up with the baby hope does not always ensure fulfillment and so because a lady a womb there are many things that can happen to the baby there is a functionary that is always assigned to accompany this woman who is carrying a baby until the day that she gives back and even post delivery she is referred to as a a midwife a midwife a midwife that's what they go to school to learn a midwife it is to accompany what is coming until it arrives and to give to the establishment 
let's look at another verse of scriptures I'm gone in for six o'clock this was my spiritual father the apostle Romans verse Isaiah chapter 26 and let us read from verse 16 Lord in trouble have they visited thee so that you find out that intercessory labors have multiplied in our nation because our nation is once again troubled in trouble have they visited thee they poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them next verse like as a woman with child that draw it near the time of her delivery is in pain and cried out in her pangs so have we been in the sight O lord the contractions are already on what we expect now is that a baby shows up but verse 18 we have been with child we are pregnant we have been in pain we have as it were brought forth what wind the expectation was a baby but what was brought forth was wind We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Our expectations of change was cut short. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Our oppressors, after it has been said and done, are still standing. This verse gives us a possible outcome of our labors in Nigeria. So that when some of us prophesy, we put bots after our prophecy not because we are not sure but because we know that such prophecies that come with birth required labors midwifery midwifery first chronicles 12 32 it's a charge so i'm just going like that when you arrange the verses of scripture you understand what god is saying to us first chronicles 12 32 and of the children of issachar which were men that had understanding of the times to know what israel ought to do the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command there in this season we need first the emergence of a the company of the children of Issachar who will announce to us as a nation as the body of christ that it is not yet time to celebrate it is not yet time our prayers have impregnate have brought about a pregnancy like a man meets with his wife i said to us that one of the things that happens in the place of intimacy which is the third layer of fellowship is that things are born now the new nigeria has been conceived based on the collisions of a company of, of the company of intercessors and god you you need to to make a baby to, to, to give hope that the baby will come even in the birth of jesus it was holy ghost and mary are you with me we have collided serially with god in prayer and now a pregnancy has ensued but it's not yet the excitement day my cry is that we will not rejoice too soon as those who have access to the ministry of the children of Issachar, what should we be doing is that the, our intercessory labors must morph it must change it was first to bring about um, a conception and that has happened we have rejoiced for a few days that ah you are pregnant now we have been waiting for many years you have been called barren now there's a baby in your womb but beyond the baby in your womb we must employ we must morph and become another functionary who will begin to use a cane the tools of prayer to bring before God petitions so our kind of prayer is changing petitions petitions because spiritual intelligence tells us that there are movements in darkness to abort our hope to make sure that come 2023 it will be a continuation of the misery in our nation that thieves will rule us that Asu will still go on strike next year. 
even though they will resume very soon don't say amen don't worry just you just follow don't say amen don't worry i know that your amen does not come out of faith so don't say it uh, no no uh, 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 the average the average university student does not have faith for resumption i'm saying that the plan is that there will be strike again next year because the attitude of the person that will come will also look like the person doesn't care because the person has shown that he does not care Sila. we have to pray because if we if you if you are driving and you take your feet off the pedals of your accelerator you don't need to press your brake for the car to slow down it will slow down by itself and when he comes to a hilly place the car can stop without applying the brakes if we stop praying now then this pregnancy will yield the wind and the inhabitants of the world will still be standing come 2023 i was sharing with papa this morning that it is because of this body that jesus said to me on the day that we should have celebrated that you know no when we finish the 40 days there's a lot of celebration how many people saw the way i was you know even after the meeting there were nice songs coming from the choir it was great but me i still bowed my head because it's not everything that you must say some of the things that i we, we don't want to say is that we are not the only ones laboring our multiplied intercession as occasion multiplied labors in darkness to counter what we are doing unfortunately brethren say unfortunately unfortunately the ones that have been recruited are not just men in darkness they are men in light who have sold out because of money men who have gifted who have given utterances from their places in god to back up wickedness in our nation so we must keep praying we must keep praying to wear out their energies we must pray long so that when the scales are measured we will have achieved many hours of of petition so that we can displace what they have as energy that's why when we closed like those who have an understanding of the times that from legal petition of uh, legal intercessors people have functioned within the legal framework we must come now into an hospital environment and begin to function like midwives god has instructed that to be able to bring the balance that we desire based on our own quota as hwcn and attached ministries we must contribute 200 hours of prayers every day for the next one year simply put we will require only 30 minutes of prayers per person but we need 400 foot soldiers standing to religiously somebody say religious it means that when i use the word religiously it means you must, you will be diligent to make sure because heaven is counting for every day we have been given a window to go full blast as at the last count on the Moses company we had 290 something Abi? yes we are going to 400 and latest by the 1st of October we must have attained to 400 or more and trusting God that we will exceed so that in the days that some people sleep we will still be able to meet up God is measuring and we cannot fail him to ensure that this praying man is just i mean it's just 30 minutes that is one over 48 of your day to ensure that they stay in their places another company that's the whole company has been occasion all you need to do if you're already on the group you'll find out that you have only had one prayer point since the last four days it is to pray that those who have signed up to pray for the nation are not wearied. Lord, help them to make out time. 400 men praying any scattered 30 minutes every week. Somebody say, why, why are you not praying at the same time? No, no, we are not the ones receiving the prayers. 
there's a counter in heaven who is receiving and, and calculating how much is coming in as prayers may we not be found wanting may we not rejoice and forget that we have not arrived you know Egypt, Israel celebrated when they crossed the Red Sea how many of those who celebrated entered two, two. somebody said two What's the ratio of two over three million? You'll find out that you cannot, you cannot round it up to one. So if, if, if we are just, if we are just 50, or we are more than 50, definitely. But I'm just saying if we are just 50, it means the possibility of entry is zero. Because if only two made it out of three million, it means in the 50 it will be 0 0.00000 until in your regular calculator that cannot go exponential what will it write error and no it's not worth calculating that's the cry in case you are afraid that if you sign up you will not meet up can i still encourage you that you pray are you with me pray make sure you make out time and pray for this nation we have not finished praying our prayers for conception have been heard by god but our prayers that we guarantee delivery have just begun and we need to pray more if you studied science you know it is cheaper generally to conceive than to go through gestation and give him birth. May God help you in the name of Jesus. In three minutes, I want us to raise up a cry to the Lord that he will enable us to meet up with that which he requires. You can pray now. What we seek is enablement. Enablement. We have found out that we were not framed to be consistent outside the spirit all of us will drop out including this boy that speaks there is a work to do and we seek your face that you will keep us instant in season and out of season there will be none amongst us that chickens out if you're listening to us online or you are privileged to, to to listen to this message even if you cannot sign up we want to plead that prayers be made for our nation because god must help us our expectation is that the sons of the wicked will no longer bear rule over our nation it is possible that a new nation emerges as the year closes and in stronger fashion come 2023 but we must pray we must not rest the bible says that god even god will not say no to his people who cry out to him in the morning and the evening he will come speedily to judge on their behalf on this foundation we stand that there will be interventions if we do not stop crying but we seek your mercy we seek your grace Oh, Saito Kaita la Kababota. Bombe Santo Baribre Casifenote. In Fatino me Sofia Tama. Bombe Vaita Belate. Abran de Suso Tasima Meto. En Fatata Bamo. Mia Kombi Sia Kabataya. Afi Feno Saito Pateya. Help us that we will not fail. Help us. Help us. Help us that our homes as a nation will not be aborted. Raise midwives amongst us. Oh, Makimo Kaso Sotoko, Bekota Kemo Bevan Kapaliata Kaba, Rabati Kapa Sante Babo, but the Tamia Mema Babo Vecante invited Tamima Brex Tavenata Bosia. Oh, we ask for oil. We ask for oil that our lamps will not grow dim, that they will not be put out. 
let the oil be supplied let the oil be supplied can you connect these labors to the supply of the oil oh give me oil give me oil give this company sufficient oil that our lamps will be burning in prayers so give us all in our lamps keep us burning give us all in our lamps we pray give us all Keep us burning till the break of day. Give us oil. Keep us burning. Give us oil. All in our lives. Keep us burning. Keep us burning. The bread. There is a break of day for Nigeria. Give us oil. In a more cup of moss, a covenant of Caparianda. name we have prayed so father we ask of you that there will be a supply let there be drawings to pray let there be visions let there be dreams let there be instructions in timely fashion that we will not rest on our oars until our great nation is born in our lifetime changes before this year ends that before the year closes the water will break Come 2023, our feet will be deep into the reality of newness. We believe you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You may please be seated. You can welcome your neighbor once more to church and say you are welcome. So Holy Spirit, we now wait on you. There is nothing more that we can do. Send your power now and set the captives free. So Holy Spirit, we wait in on you. Holy Spirit, we now wait on you. There is nothing more that we can do. Send your power. Holy Spirit, we wait in on you. We wait in. Holy Spirit, we wait in on you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we wait in on you. Holy Spirit.
are the spirit of our reality. We wait on you. Holy Spirit, we waiting on you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we waiting on you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. chapter 1 and we want to read 9 verses from verse 20 to verse 28 church this reading is supposed to be a journey and I want to plead with you that you open your heart to these truths that are captured in Paul's epistle to the Colossian church maybe I need to add this that the reason why it pleased the Lord that these letters be captured in scriptures is because what he said to the Colossian church through Paul is relevant for us there are truths that we are designed to embody and live by There is a call to something beyond mental knowing. And it is that everything that is truly known should be pressed into until an experience is born. That's the design. That's the design. I want to trust the Lord that the advertisements of the Christ which are captured in scriptures as glory Will become our experiences in the name of Jesus Colossians chapter 1 from verse 20 to 28 and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now hath he reconciled not just things in heaven and things in the earth but you were also reconciled when the blood of the Christ was deployed one of the imports of the shedding of his blood beyond cleansing is that the blood was designed to occasion reconciliation an account statement needed to be balanced you began in God and you were on the other side because of the error of Adam and your own errors but when his blood was paid he decides were changed you were brought back to the side of God reconciliation communicates restoration 
having paid what is due amen am i simple enough so the blood was paid to reconcile everything in heaven and everything in the earth including you peter and the bible gives us a picture in the 21st verse what your former state was you were alienated it means you were estranged from god you were also an enemy and you're an enemy not just a physical thing but in your mind your soul which is the which what which is what plays host to your mind was operating against the intentions of god was operating against the designs of god you are an enemy in your mind by wicked works yet now had he reconciled it gives you an organic experience of salvation next verse 22 in the body of his flesh now he reconciled you let's let's read from 21 to 22 because he's stretched read. and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works yet now hath he reconciled give me in the body of his flesh through death to what end to present you holy the word holy there is consecrated you were removed from every other purpose and now you have been established in devotion to god alone holy and unblameable that means in no aspect can we say ha ah, blessing see, see your life see your life no because you are now above blame and unreprovable it means there's no aspect of your existence that we can query as being on, on uh, in upright or unrighteous you have passed beyond the dimensions of rebuke and what paul is bringing to us here is in his sight it's a legal expression that's how god sees you it does not mean that the believer behaves well all the time but there's a way god currently sees you not because of how you responded but based on what jesus did it is saying to us that when we begin to express in the fullness of what the christ has occasioned for us all of us will have been presented to god holy not just legally but experientially that i will not catch you dancing buga because buga does not advance the cause the cause of god there's an evil under the sun one of the platforms where i've seen that if is on facebook there's something they call real and many times when when i have time maybe i post something and i have another two three minutes i just scroll i see some of our, some of us that i don't i'm not that tech savvy there's a way you can match a song and your picture are like you with me when i see the songs that some 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 people who who claim to be witnesses of the christ you see kiss daniel you see this thing and i'm wondering uh, what else do you want us to say the reason why some could not maximize the promise of god in the wilderness was that they were unbelieving their hearts were hard do you think we're lying no because maybe we should do town hall meeting one of these days no you know what they do in town hall meeting it's not just somebody speaking every okay in church they call it family meeting and we should tell ourselves the truth let us ask you why are you not changing is it that we are not we are lying to you or you just how can you be comfortable expressing the world and you say that you're of christ it shouldn't be that easy do they put guns to people's heads to post a song that is not god and your picture and you are shaking to it is do they is it by you see a gun how can we trust you to stand for jesus if they put a gun on your head you have compromised without pressure 
when there's pressure would you remain their whole churches that will be empty because they have not been raised to stand for anything I don't know maybe I'm the only one who is frustrated he said WC it still gives me a little bit of convenience however I know people more than they think I know them you should be surprised at the kind of sermons I'm preaching because normally we should have outgrown some things Abi? Uh, but me I know people a true leader does not talk all the time he gives people time to adjust but you can't be like this here and you be like that there an end must come to double standards Don't, we are not saying be writing Jesus on your page like I write on my own we know you are afraid that we lose some friends if you do that so much so we don't want to rock your boat but we are just saying that if God is making his intentions known to you in the manners that you have been receiving you will need to have locked your heart not to be on the path of change everywhere this boy goes to by the mercy of God from motor park to airport I have people stop me everywhere they don't stop to give me money but they want to know are you are you the last time i was trying to bat my hair you know it was i saw a lady looking in my direction so i just waved oh god bless you and so i'm not looking for anything so i walked into the barbing salon all of a sudden the lady came after a while and walked in and said sorry sir sorry sir you look like somebody that i know are you reverend tula Gula? it was like a gold mine I have been listening to you and oh, oh, and I wanted to say a few things. I said, well, it's not a problem. I have a WhatsApp line that everybody can have and reach me. She said, you mean I can have your number? I'm not God now. Somebody was in my hotel room. A brother was in my hotel room on Friday night. I said, sit down. He got knelt down. I said, sit down. He knelt down. I said, ah. He will sit down. When he wants to talk, he wants to kneel down and say, ah. Say, me I'm not like that too say, I, I always say it I'm a regular person I'm a regular person if you know how anointed you are there are some people you don't respect again I don't mean that when we, we are mutually anointed we should not respect ourselves I'm just saying that the every person thinks that God was partial giving some good things there are many things you have that you have not you have not been able to push out or the season has not come you may find out that the ones you are bowing your head for now are the ones who will be looking for you to bow their heads to you when what is in you matures and in the name of Jesus what Jesus has planted in you will mature I said sit down so, so he said ah, ha, sa, sa. you know when you eventually meet somebody I don't know what to say I said calm down talk to me his wife was with us man sit down say no no I said, sit down sit down if you don't see that, I will not talk. He says, I don't know how, how long, how long. I've been praying that this day will come. Which day? To meet who? Ah, I'm not Michael Jackson now. But there are a lot of testimonies that people give outside this our group about change. About change. One of our sisters was sharing with me and my wife that you know when she went for service she didn't tell us and if she's hearing she didn't tell us it's not a problem child. we are not that we are not that possessive me and child just did not see her again and then we got to know that she had gone for youth service when she now got to youth service she found out that in every room that she entered to people to do something there was a sound that was she was used to that she was hearing her. all of you hear this person hear this person hear this person are you not a is that not reverend? Is that not reverend? Is that not reverend? Is that not reverend? And they said, Yes, yes, yes. And she said, I mean, I know him now. And he says, Our daddy. They said, No, you mean you have seen this person before? And I'm wondering. She said, Instantly, the way they acted around her changed instantly. That says, You that we need prayer. 
It's you that if there's a problem, that's where they go. It's you that will teach us the Bible. One of those times I traveled, one of the receptionists paid money to one of the protocol officers. Paid money. Somebody say paid money. Let me meet him. He was not to sleep with him. That in our school, I've been hearing about your name. Is this you? Sir, so one word of prayer. The person paid money. The mercy of God has allowed this little that we know to change lives. HWC and we should begin to bear the fruits of these utterances. Because if you go out and claim that you are associated with us and you arrive, they will push you into a place and if they see you function contrary, they will know that you, don't, you have not embodied the spirit of the house. To mention HWC and now is to set yourself up for performance. Wake up. It is time that we begin to align with the words that come forth. God is producing a new man and by mercy he exposes us to timely emphasis so that we can press into what he's doing. Even in preparing to come to preach, I get rebuked the course of my life gets altered. I mean that God is talking to me. So my life is being changed even in preparing sermons. I go back to listen to myself many times. You are around when my sister was around on Tuesday. How many times she said she listens to some sermons? 15 times. She's a cerebral person. No? Based on my interactions with her, she's, she's very intelligent. She said it. She said she's like a straight A's person. 15 times. 15 times. There was something she was going through and she said, okay so how do i manage this i said well i have a bank of messages for you to manage that because i preach a lot of that aspect i sent her like eight sermons so when she listened to the first one she felt okay uh, which what which ones did you preach before this one because it looks at like this one we choke me let, let me start from we're not saying we're good we're just saying that god has been merciful to us and so we should take advantage of his mercy and live lives that are commensurate with what we are eating tell me if you are feeding somebody with chocolate every day chocolate is eating shawarma is eating what else do people eat is is eating pizza is eating bananas i see they say bananas used to help the body too is eating plenty things and it remains thin you know we'll become worried if it was in nigerian yoruba film we we'll say that there are spirits inside him that they are, they are open as he's eating they are opening their mouths and they're the ones eating if there are people out there who don't hear what we hear and because they don't hear what we hear they are the way they are we should not hear what we hear and still be like them our lives should challenge them it should provoke compliance that's the burden for the hour There is a way God sees us because of the sacrifice of the Christ. Verse 23. Verse 23. If ye continue in the faith. Now let's go back to verse 22. I want to pick it from a point. So. Yes, we're reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight he puts a column because he wants to explain that status he knows that somebody can grab that thing and run so he says next verse if it means you sustain that that kind of outlook before god if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard it means if a man loses touch of faith loses his grounding becomes unsettled and is moved away from the hope of the gospel god will see you differently which you have heard 
and which was preached not just to you but to every creature which is under heaven whereof I Paul was made a minister as 24 who now rejoice so Paul is speaking about himself in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind another translation says that which is left because legalities have been fulfilled the organics need to be up, up, need to be updated fill up that which is left of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake Paul is saying I'm suffering because Jesus has suffered to make available I must suffer to make accessible fill up that which is behind of my afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God verse 26 even the mystery he begins to give us a picture of some, one, something that needs fulfillment of the word of God even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations it means before our age this mystery had been locked it was a wonder in God but God had locked it and many generations had come God had hid the mystery was existing but it was hidden hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints it means it's now open revelation when we speak of mysteries they are not things that God has hid from us they are things that he has hid for us because there is an appointed time in God for the manifestation of every mystery when the mystery becomes a revelation Paul is saying Balum, this thing has been exposed to us to his saints verse 27 we're almost done this saints to whom God will make known that's the word reveal what is the riches of the glory of this mystery and we may need to slow down a little because of the construction it says to these saints the saints of the Christ because it, the Bible did not say the saints it means it's not for people who call themselves saints but his saints those that he has sanctified are you with me it is to these people God will make known will reveal what is the riches the word riches there is the word abundance that the saints will come into the knowledge of the abundance of the glory of that mystery that mystery was a portion glory in God there are realities that are locked up in that mystery the advertisements precious things many streams of experiences that are locked up in that mystery the sum of the glory but God now will make us know not one stream of the glory of that mystery but the abundance of it all of it among the Gentiles that if we send you one two things one is that if we send you to a place where they don't know God if this mystery has been activated not just by mental knowledge but by experience when the Gentiles see you you will become a wonder to them because your life becomes or gives off the, the, the rays of this mystery have you, have you been walking in the darkness before and maybe it's all dark outside and then you knock your friend's door maybe it's an airtight door and when your friend opens the door a little what do you see? You see light coming from inside like when the when clouds hide the sun you see at the edges of the cloud you see the rays of the sun that's how the Gentiles will be wondering what what kind of person is this during this my last trip 
I encountered God as in his mind reading dimension and I was afraid the first time it happened was lucky it happened in lorry too my protocol person I had only one in Lagos and it was because the hotel was far from was a little bit far from the venue so it was the one that would follow the driver to pick me and all of that so he, he said sir I want to see you before I go I said okay it's not a problem we've been walking around after my last session can we see as he was going away God said I'll give him babies ah, I, I'm not sure he was wearing a ring so I was asking in my heart you give him babies babies fine he said he wants to see me and when people want to see me like that normally is ah sir you know after listening to two sermons the average person says ah sir god says that <laughs> i should submit to you <laughs> he said i just walk away from you like that if he calls me for the next one month so if you have been calling me for the next one month it's my strategy i may not answer you for a year if you trouble me, I will tell you, say, okay, sir, mentor me. I have mentorship material. This thing, the way I'm teaching, is how a mentor should school somebody. So my sermons are mentorship material, and there are plenty. It means from this last one week, let's say from Sunday to yesterday, you will have three sermons from Sunday. You will have one from Tuesday, which only one. You will have two from Thursday. You have two from Friday. You have three from Saturday. But I should still sit and say, you know that Michael means might of God. No, no, you, you are not nice. You should not be that wicked because the wickedness of your mind has been sorted. I don't think that the shining, the radiance of a minister should be enough conviction that you should submit to that person. Was shallow. The second thing I run away from is that I minister for one hour and a pastor slips a note to me and says, Sir, God is saying that you minister in our convention. I will say, ha, 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 ha. Is that how you are? You don't know me now. I can package myself and preach well and be a wicked man. The one I'm battling now is that everybody, people can no longer invite you for a meeting, Pastor Diola, and say, sir, we just, we feel that you should come for our conference. They say, we were in prayers. It, it has to be delivered like a parcel from 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 God who we were in prayers and God convinced us that you are the one that is supposed to come and bring the word of life on a day that God has convinced me to be somewhere else you see we people are we can be simple I'm not saying that God cannot send some people but Sometimes, as the thing is being delivered, girl, me, ma, I know that. Okay, you want me to come for your meeting, and it's not a problem. I tell you instantly, don't just say July. Do you have a date? Bring the date. I'm going to go before God, but don't disturb me after two hours to say, Are you coming? I'm not designed to be that shallow. There's really no conference I've been called to come to now that I've not preached along that line before. Those who are close to me know that God does not permit me to preach a sermon yet. So if you invite me to preach the power that is at work in us, and after two months you invite me to preach the power that is at work in us, I'll deliver a totally different sermon because they are new every month. So same topic does not, does not give me does not bring ease to me it actually gives me more problems because i will need to upgrade knowledge to be able to meet the demands of the new conference somebody say ministry is labor 
Uh, you are not saying it well now. The way I'm saying it is how to labor to be rewarded. If you labor like that, you will not have time to be chasing the reward. Because if you are working for somebody that is good, you will not be thinking too much about salary. Eh. Abijibola. If your boss is a good person, you will not be thinking too much about no. You will face your work and do it. Knowing that as that when due, you will be paid. This mystery that had been hidden was a portion and advertisement. It was gifted radiance in God. It had the ability to distinguish the possessor from every other person. It had the ability to distinguish the companies that play hosts to its revelations from every other person. You cannot have touched it and its essence not distinguish you. You will be different if this mystery is activated. You don't know it if you have not become different. What is that mystery? The mystery, the Bible says, which is Christ in you the hope of glory somebody say Christ in you Christ in you the hope of glory verse 28 is our verse of engagement for the month of September our labor is around this ancient mystery that God has hid from ages and generations before us a mystery that he has chosen to reveal to us in our own generation a generation that a, a mystery that was not revealed in parts but was revealed in all of his robustness so that the possessor can come into all of the radiance of that mystery which is christ in you the hope of glory verse 28 speaking of Christ whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ let's begin our journey now there are realities that are occasioned or maybe i should begin this way to say that the testimony of being saved captures two basic experiences first is that a man gives his life to christ why is that the first it is because in Titus 2.11, the Bible tells us that the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. It means at best, what the Christ does at the place where the event of salvation takes place is that he appears as God's way out. A man activates what he brings, what the Christ brings, which is salvation, by subscription are you with me so he appears before you and because of the word of faith that you have heard you commit your life into his hands so one of those first experiences or those two experiences is that you give your life to christ if you have not given your life to christ then you are not saved but you see, giving your life to Christ is not the only experience that, div that, that defines you know, common salvation. It is also that Christ was received. You received Christ. You received Christ. So it's a, it's a giving and a reception. It is on that ground that we say that the testimony of the man who is saved is not the testimony of a changed life. It is the testimony of an exchange you gave and you took are you with me jesus 
cannot dwell in your heart if there was nothing to give this is praise have you am i right yes how's your brother okay still at home what's your only okay good okay was two of you that were around that time too i promised you something i've not given you so remind me are you around around and uh, we'll try and sort it this week so it's the testimony of an exchange life i gave him my life and he gave me his own so paul in galatians 2 20 was giving us a picture of the transaction he said i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but now christ lives where in me I, I am my same body but i run a new operating system and the new operating system is the living christ or the indwelling christ he now said if you see me the life that i now live is still in my mortal body i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me so that's the testimony of the believer okay having said that i want to say that the rea there are realities that now begin to express in the life of that one who has received jesus because he gave himself to jesus there are realities their experiences experiences where you cannot get sorry i mean experiences that you cannot get by any other means um if you run and you become thirsty what will you cry out for if you are me i'll cry out for cold water but you see where there's no cold water we can administer cold coke and coke is not even it's not even a good substitute let's say those those um lesser gaseous maybe fanta good but you see in actual fact to a thirsty man fanta is just a gap standard you can't total, forget the advertisement what do they put the advertisement uh, they, they they make it look as if those things can quench your thirst maybe seven of seven of is even wrong to quench thirst <laughs> Yeah, but you know there's a way there's a way i walk seven up pepsi that it can that it gives me a near thirst quenching feeling is that i shake it so much and then open the cap you don't open the cap for it to go you shake it once it bubbles you allow the bubbles to go up you open it they calmly go down back into the bottle so the gas goes what you'll be drinking will just be sweet water that's all no no gas so it, it near quenches your thirst you can go and try it it works all the time but I'm saying that when it comes to quenching thirst, cook, um, sorry, water was designed to quench thirst. The refreshing that water brings, no other liquid can bring it. The one who comes into Christ, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, therefore must understand that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And after the word new creature, give me the verse what what um punctuation mark is there what punctuation mark now what what does a full colon mean or a colon the other one is a semicolon what does it mean it means we want to explain so paul in his writing wanted the corinthian church to know why the man in christ is a new creature it's not because he thinks that he's a new creature it's not because he feels that he's a new creature he's a new creature because there are a new set of things that is brought to interface with the bible says that all things are passed away behold all things have become new it means if you are still interfacing with the old things it is false to claim that you are in christ are you with me this was how i entered my impartation service yesterday morning and jesus was upon us I was teaching that 
we must be able to list the number of things the number of things because what god told me in the hotel room into yesterday morning was that he was going to clothe us and i was making them understand that dummy you are not there shall but that dummy call my wife this night call my wife this night yeah. good this night um that if i bring a new garment for you it's not about a garment to call my wife if i bring a new garment for you no matter how great that garment is even if it is decked in diamonds you won't change here Abi, even if you feel ah it's so fine let me change it i i i trust my sisters what would they do they will they will grab you and they are just taking you to a changing room but i know that their lips will not be shut they will be muttering tongues as they are going that lord whatever has occasioned this thing must die before we arrive so jerry used to sell jeans trousers abby abby so whether you're watching online or anywhere if you want to buy good jeans trousers please patronize brother jerry you will pay me for this advert okay so jerry brings a, a nice jean trouser and you say hey, this trouser and you quickly start doing your belt on the stage here i know if i do that oba will not shout he will first tap me down you're on stage so i was telling them that when god wants to clothe he takes men into a changing room how do we know there's such a place there's such a dimension where people have people's garments are chained it's because one of the things that we come into the experience of as the new creature is the is the reality of places in the spirit so that you see your supplies does not come from everywhere there is a location where your supplies are drawn from paul in responding to the church that gave to him he said my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory in christ jesus he names the bank the bank is located within an ecosystem so you can say zenith bank at um no at a starlight so the starlight there the geographical location is christ jesus but the hub of supplies his glory is a place it's a place so there are places in the spirit and these places are designed to occasion specific realities in a house there are places no matter how much you want to we will you can you can go to the kitchen and pull out the pot and we will there even though your pot and potty bear the same their names are close and now uh, i'll be pot and potty and one is just an extension of the other one but if you make that mistake you will not be able to recover from it because if you are a child you will still bear the scars and so the, the 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 place called the toilet has a set of realities i know for some people the store the toilet is a prayer room the toilet is even a study room the toilet is likely a very revelatory room i know it can also be a praying room for some people it's a worship room they stay long because they don't sing in any other place until until water touches them then they begin to sing okay i know you can sleep in the sitting room but the place that is crafted for sleep is where it's a bedroom the room has the name of the major furniture there attached to the name of the room in the same way there are places in god and the church must be made to understand that many times when god drops a desire in our heart in fulfilling that desire we will need to travel we need to travel so we traveled yesterday for four minutes and when we entered the room if you walked into that meeting it was obvious that the realities of a room had been occasioned because god came and began to clothe me so when we say these things we are not trying to be spooky there are things that we should know 
it doesn't happen like that in every place there are places to arrive at even when you study your bible understand that the reason why you don't understand sometimes is that you are reading from a place where understanding cannot happen you have to join what was the song i sang yesterday sir? oh secret place Don't sing again. I can't do that song if I'm already feeling the anointing very strong on my head. But I was just humming that song, humming that song. After a while, so that we could arrive early, then God gave me a sound. I can't even remember the sound, but I want the keyboardist. My daughter Jewel was around. So be singing that sound, be singing that sound. Say, oh God, play what I'm playing, you know, because we need to arrive early. These things we speak of are, you see, it's because the reason why we function like that is not because we are strong it's because we are the new creature all things are passed away you should be given new tools if you were into catering before your tools should be a pot what's that what do they call that big thing in your bag that they now is gas it used to be eh? no in english in english eh? no not coal pot he used that is eh? It's like a gas burner, but that that make you know that mega gas burner that they put pots on. You know it now. Eh? You said, Oh yeah, now. Uh, if you say three pot stand, this is one three pot stand too now. No, a three pot stand is a stand that has three legs. Abby. Mind yourself. Yes, now. Even this speaker is standing on a tripod stand. She shall know that gas thing. Uh -huh. I died, you see, I've forgotten what I want to say about the gas thing. Good. If you are a caterer, you will be gifted that gas thing. You should have a big pot where you can cook for like a hundred people. You have those tools. If the next day you become a mechanic, a tripod, that your tripod stand. What I call it is a giant gas burner. If you know the name, you can furnish us with it, but it's not repost now. Um, if you have that giant gas burner, it's not an advantage for you as a mechanic. It can be an additional tool that in your mechanic joint, you have somebody who fries bones as, as they are preparing the car. So it's a, it's, it's a side hustle. It's, it's, it's not the core thing. You must have a set of spanners. Am I right? Yes. You must have overalls that will not have been that will have been out of place if you were a caterer. Your gloves will change. The engineering gloves are different. The shoes you know, you can't wear those boots to be to be cooking. Are you with me? So every time you come into a new shape of existence, there is the requirement that there are new things that you come into. The proof that you have switched identity is that there's a new set of things that you're working with. I want to ask us, what is new in your life since you got saved? Because for the average believer, it's just mental. I'm saved. Say this guy, you see the lie like before. Say, is your business? Some people still are so brash, they will even say, is your lie? It's not my lie, it's your own. If you're asking it in your mind, it's your lie. It's your lie. And I hope you have not read scriptures far to know that liars have de destiny. So the desire for change must be high in our hearts because salvation was not designed to be fully expressed mentally there was an experience that was attached to it i said all of this to prove that there are some things that cannot be occasioned outside christ dwelling in you the star has light but you have never felt the heat of a star before and may you not feel it or uh, country people can manipulate 
the star and make it generate heat you know when the moon shines in the night you think the moon has no no energy but the psalmist understood how what mysterious men can do so he said the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night you think smiting is heat oh david was a man of understanding others two priesthood that you can use this the 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 this the moon to oppress people but you see based on the creation of those those light bodies hoisted up in the firmaments um the sun is in a class of its own none generates heat like the sun it means you cannot occasion the heat of the sun from any other route i'm establishing that blessing whatever is in a man will give forth the realities of that man you cannot replicate the realities of the indwelling christ it means if it's not there it's not there if he's there therefore you should labor to give him room so that he expresses himself so this subject i'm going to teach it under three subtopics non re subtopic or don't re subtitle my sermon leave it there but three subtopics one will be christ's entrance and if you like christ's incoming Christ's incoming and the incoming of the Christ so colon Christ's incoming colon you can write the wonder of conversion so when Christ comes what we expect to see is the wonder of conversion two is Christ's indwelling and that's the core for this part of the series the measures of consecration what we expect is that if christ lives inside you you will be increasing in consecration the third is that the one who lives does not want to, or the one who dwells does not want to dwell as an end he wants to feel so christ's the third will be christ's in feeling the wonder of compassion it is the infilling of the christ that releases the energy of god to other people the wonder of compassion i said the first is what christ's incoming let's call it incoming the wonder of conversion not salvation but conversion two is what christ's indwelling that's what the measures or if you like the you can call it the intensification of consecration the intensification increasing measures of consecration the third is Christ's in feeling he enters he wants to live then he wants to occupy every room once he occupies every room you come into the ministry what do i call the third one the wonder of compassion or the ministry of compassion now you can release the energy because until the cup is full there's no flow so let's go one by one help us lord jesus there's a song that came to my heart today after okay he's back now he says oh what a wonderful wonderful day day i will never forget follow my pace after i've wandered in darkness away jesus my savior i met oh Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the needs of my heart. The shadows dispelling, real joys I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. 
Help me sing. Heaven came down. Oh, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Oh, down at the cross, down at the cross, my Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away, my sins were washed away and my night was on today heaven heaven came down and glory faced my soul one more time heaven heaven came down so heaven came down and glory faced my soul down at the cross and down at the cross my Savior made me whole my sins were washed away and my night was done No matter how big the sins were, my sins were washed away. And my today, heaven, heaven came down and glory. So heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Feel my soul. Precious Jesus, I thank you for your blood. Precious. 
precious Jesus, I thank you for your body broken for me. Precious Jesus, precious Jesus, I thank you for your blood. I thank. Precious Jesus, precious Jesus, I thank you for your body, I thank you for your body, broken for me, oh broken for me. Sacrifice, me to me. I remember you died for me, oh my God, and I worship you. speak of the entrance of the Christ which is the first gift that the believer receives it is designed to provoke gratitude because in the in, in, in Paul's te um, testimony of the reality of this entrance as given to the Colossian church like where we read from Give me verse 21 again. Verse 21. Let's turn it from there. Colossians 1 21. Paul speaking of us, the church, seeks to remind us first of where we came from, that we were an estranged people. We could not breathe in God or unto God. Our hearts could not pant after God. Every attempt to reach God will end in futility. Because by location, we were away from him. By passion, we were distracted from him. And so he said that we were sometime alienated. It is this one who was alienated, this one who was an enemy in his mind, that God graciously, because of subscription, gifted the Christ when you called him Lord a gate opened in your heart and a fellowship of the Christ began with your spirit this is what we describe as the incoming of the Christ and your first accurate response is gratitude it's like an enemy gave you goodness but beyond gratitude there is the need to labor in gratitude i'm going to explain myself i've said to us many times i think the first place i said it was rcf university of law it was their world conference sometime last year or so and what i said i crafted it this way i said thank you jesus 
is not designed to be the greatest expression of gratitude to Jesus your greatest expression to Jesus for anything done towards you is that you live for him so a life of gratitude is greater than words of gratitude even in our Yoruba experience or human expressions you know there are some thank yous that you repeat after the person somebody gives you something or you give somebody something I say and then you now say I say why are you repeating it because you can't match utterance and countenance am I saying something there is an expectation sometimes there's nothing on the face you do something big for somebody and he says thank you and he's walking away and you say thank you like ah is that all well i'm saying the last time you said thank you maybe you didn't wait to hear god say thank you is that all that we say because the last time some people showed gratitude to god for the gift of the christ was when they said thank you there is nothing in their existence that appreciates that gift if somebody gives you a car one of the ways to be grateful is that you don't wreck the car that every time the person sees it he can say ah you are using this car well you know i didn't buy my car how many of you know i didn't buy it i've not bought any i bought the first one was a gift the second one was a gift it was a, a gift of encouragement for my parents my biological parents so when you pray pray for them for blessing your pastor pray 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 how many of you will pray ah somebody want to pray oh please pray 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 in case you forget to pray you can pray your prayer now you know when some people say we'll be praying for you know that you have you have missed prayer in that area don't go to sleep on their prayer so if you want to pray pray now it's just a word lord bless them lord keep them no, no, that's simple. Good. okay thank you thank you um i'm saying that the life that god gave some people they wrecked the life that god is not proud of giving them that was the case in genesis chapter 6. the bible said god repented that he made man but, ah! oh see what this thing has become the Bible said because man was evil in all of his thoughts and everything he did was evil. I didn't create you like this. So the gift of gratitude, the utterance of gratitude is how we begin our journey in gratitude. But beyond the utterance of gratitude is a life of gratitude. And the life of gratitude is the life that pleases God. You were living a life that displeased him before. It means you will need to go through a process that makes your life one lived in gratitude. And the process is what we call the process of conversion. It's supposed to be the major import, the major product of the incoming of the Christ. That when Christ comes into a man, that man cannot be the same. He's not just safe, he's also converted. There is proof that change has happened. Now, um, if we plug this keyboard to the light coming from the socket, it will blow this keyboard. Abby? So, this your is it plug you call that thing, that black thing. The plug at the end of your power cable is called a converter it is designed to convert what current flows in the wall see if you want to say it mention your name first uh -huh. so because i can't remember what current flows in the wall ac or dc eh? no first pronounce your name if you are sure raise your hand where are the electrical people okay so my what everybody knows you so is it ac or dc eh? ac okay what flows in a battery dc it means that the keyboard is designed to operate by direct current are you with me 
but what flows in the world is in the wall is alternating current it means if you run alternating current directly into the keyboard it will blow it so the keyboard the head that connects with the wall is provisioned to operate as a converter that's why if your keyboard if the head blows you can't just cut any plug head and put it there it's supposed to convert alternating current to direct current so the power is entering the keyboard like it's a battery that is powering it are you with me in the same way there's a life you used to live i know you didn't steal i know but you lied i know you did not commit fornication of adultery but you see even if you were pi even if you were morally upright morality does not qualify you need to pass through because it is not by power it is not by might it has to be by his spirit and you see his spirit doesn't power morality it powers christ likeness are you with me i'm saying blessing i know blessing you are a good person you know my wife speaks highly about you i'm serious you don't know uh, she speaks very highly about you so um you are a very good person and we appreciate your being good you know i always say it but if your goodness is traceable to home training then your goodness is not approved of god there should be something that is at work in your life that is superior to home training i know you have home training you i know from the first time i saw you i know you have home training abina yes but you see at your best expressions or let me put it this way your best expressions is not supposed to be a byproduct of home training because the holy spirit operates higher than home training when you meet who have home training they should be able to say blessing uh -uh. we know they trained you well but what is this thing about that's what we're talking about a conversion we used to sing one song well the the word there is great change but we know it's exchange but assume that what you're hearing me sing is exchange the song says there's a great change since i met god there's a great change since i met god there's a great change is exchange i hear you since i met god there's a great change since i met the lord so he now explains the great change he says the things i used to do i do them no more that's what the song said that's the reality but actually in expression it should be the things i used to do i can do them no more because your operating system has changed are you with me so you can't for it will be diff it should be difficult to lie it should be difficult to lie because your operating system that powers lying is gone so if you want to lie now it, you, you should be caught if you still lie successfully now and you know the way some people lie there are these males when i used to work in the corporate world we used to if if we want to deal with an issue what we open up is a male trail it means everything that you want to say about that issue you must just be replying and replying and replying so sometimes we have over 200 males trying to solve the same problem the reason why you must maintain the trail is so that nobody will take us back if we have solved to point seven out of ten somebody who has not participated before comes and says so what's the name of the client or okay, we, we have sold the house so we just say reply into the mail trail some people they tell training lies like that that if they say one and they're about to get them ah, but you know that ah, and you are wondering with them Paro! they have ready-made lies the lies you, you, you know what where the name ready-made came from that instead of going to the tailor and waiting for them to sew the word ready-made means already made it means it's just buy a move some people have ready-made lies that once there's a problem they pull one once you want to 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 to, to catch them red-handed they, they have access They'll just lay lies and when people lie to me like that i enjoy it 
No, it's okay. Okay, 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 okay. When I want to help them, I, I don't. If you know somebody's lying to you, it, it, it humbles them by saying, You know, I know you're lying. I just tell them, Shall be saying the truth. Just, just leave it there. Let, let your heart convict you if I lie or not. It's not everybody that can be lied to successful. There's a spirit in man. Hey, there's a spirit in man. So we are saying that it should be difficult to lie. It should be difficult to steal. It should be easy to walk past what is not your own. It should be hard to fornicate. It should be easy to walk past temptation. Because you have a new operating system. All this one that our Christian life is built around the brazen altar. I will do something wrong and say God was sorry. It's a sin offering. That's the only offering that's activated for some people. All the time. Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. God knows that in two hours time, the young man will approach. They have never approached the throne of grace for strength to do the will of God. They always approach to say, I'm sorry, forgive me, forgive me. After a while, they lose, they lose, they lose the weight. After a while, they don't even say, I'm sorry again. They just move on. If you are like that, this series is for you. And God will show mercy. So, there is an old, what I'm talking about is something that features very well in what they call the old time religion. They are the ones that use those terminologies, conversion. That when you come to church, because in the ideal, when you come to church and give your life to Christ today, you shouldn't sing in our choir. I'm not saying when you join our church. Because we believe that God is in many places. So if you have been saved and you have started a process somewhere, we don't need to rebaptize you because we came here. That I think is a mockery of the whole essence of baptism. Because baptism is not baptism into a ministry. It's into Christ. If it has, I was baptized in the baptist ministry and I'm baptized. Are you with me? But I'm saying that there's this haphazard entrance into service that we give to people who have not been converted they bring their old realities and they mix with the things and god becomes diff it becomes difficult for god to move in the old time religion when somebody is saved they subject them to very tough discipleship and the discipleship is not designed to furnish any cerebral knowing is that we want to make you know what you what decision you just took and the possibilities that are there and we expect that with every new revelation there's an embodiment huh? god must send us ministers who are bridges between the old and the new many of them because the way this new is going without the energies of the old without the instruction of the old without the consecration of the old it will shipwreck, the, shipwreck itself. It doesn't need the enemy to attack it. It's on a path of self-destruction. We used to sing a song when we were in, in, in fellowship that time. That time we were the small ones in fellowship. We say, give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old... I have not heard it before. I, I will call that now. Because I know that is old time religion. Yes. And that's where safety is. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. So give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Is good in one more time. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Is good enough for me. The song says it was good for Paul and Silas. Is that is that Pauline thing that we want? Not this modern one that, that is only beautiful but lacks but lacks purity, lacks power. 
People want fire. They don't know that if fire touches impurity, it burns it. I said, said it in Lonnie yesterday. You want revival. The need in revival is life. We want God to send us. How can you want? Does God send dead men? Wait for life. Ezekiel 47, the need was a great, was an exceedingly great army. Ezekiel 47, 10. Am I right? Yes. But there was a process. 47, 10. Yes. No. Ezekiel. No. 37. Yes, 37, 10. 37, 10. Yes. An exceeding great army. Okay, Ezekiel 37 is the valley of dry bones. 47 is the waters in layers. Okay, so the need here was the, pro the emergence of an exceeding great army. But they didn't start by putting fire on them. The bones first need to be brought together. Because the bones are already dry. And when you speak of dry bones, you speak of a company of people who, are, who, who, have, who, are, who can no longer sense God. Irritability has been removed from their characteristics of living things if god moves they can't feel him if he talks they can't hear they can be present but their hearing is absent so what you need to do is to give them life you will command breath to enter don't put fire on them fire on dry bones will make them irrecoverable so the old time religion preached so much about conversion and it was something that Jesus preached also let's go to Matthew Matthew chapter 18 let's start from verse 1 we'll stop at verse 3 at the same time I want I'm starting from here because I want you to know the audience of Jesus who was the audience at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them his disciples and said verily I say unto you except ye be converted it means there's a kind of person that you are and in your conversion you will become as little children we will need to do a study of what little children look like little children are ever dependent ever believing ever waiting for instructions ever loving easy to forgive are you with me have you seen two three year olds fight before one takes stick and slams the other guy's head he runs away if you leave them for another two minutes they have started molding this mud house they have started molding it again and you're wondering did they not just fight because they, are, they, are, they, they have the ease of letting go Jesus was saying there are things in your life that don't qualify for the kingdom. So he said, except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Vocalizing your same status will not open the gates. There must be proof that you are converted. You are changed. Now if we go into the Acts of the Apostles, that should be Acts chapter 3. We want to see how this process happens. Why? It is because when we speak of conversion, a lot of people feel that they need to write a list of the things that they used to do and the things that they should now begin to do. So he says, I used to lie. Now I will be telling the truth. And what he begins to do is that he begins to struggle. So you have believers who say, I'm trying not to tell lies. It is still you trying to operate a new operating system 
like the old one because in the old one it was man who was laboring to in the new one we yield into conversion in the old system we struggle into conversion so in the new one we find the agent of conversion and the agent of conversion is the one that was transmitted into your spirit the one that came in the incoming christ is god's agent of conversion if you know how to yield to him how to vocalize your helplessness in sincerity of heart you will be helped that was the design when they looked unto him their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed their expectations were met our eyes are, are upon you oh god for from you our expectations come i sang the refrain of a hymn many times some, some months ago i i don't i don't know the the verse of the hymn but i know that the chorus says only trust him only trust him only trust him now for he will save you he will save you he will save you now what key are you playing on Opa. Hm. oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah Oh yeah. Only trust him. Am I right? believe was the testimony of one who had found the pathway of coming into the experience of conversion that if you trust him now he will save you when now it means every time the old man at the initial stages because the old man does not give up hope. every time the old man wants to manifest you will vocalize your trust and when he hears it the one that you trust now he will save you now so it will be the testimonies of change because you are helped not because you are trying that's the design that's the design so we are not saying be struggling be struggling i hear a lot of people say to me sir fasted and fasted and fasted and fasted you cannot come into the righteousness of god by your labor one has gone through all the way you will need to live by him and can I say this? The only way to live by to live for him is that you live by him. Can I say it again? The only way you will be able to successfully live for Jesus is that you live by Jesus. He will be the one who makes it possible. That's what you find in Philippians chapter 2. Give me from verse 12. I'll do 12, 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For, in case you think work out means try. In case you think work out means struggle. He says, for it is God, which both worketh, or which worketh in you, both to will. It means the first thing, the incoming Christ does to occasion conversion is that it changes your desires and when he has changed your desires he gives you capacity so that you can do life is designed to be lived by desires that's why he doesn't give capacity where there is no desire but there is a posture of existence that occasions this this work of the spirit and that's what we want to check in Acts chapter 3 there is the how of conversion hi it's almost 8 to kai 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 okay it means maybe I'll just do one and then we'll come back again 
and do maybe next week Sunday. So I'll not, I'll trust God. Oh, well, I'm not, let me not see that. It's because I always have an opening charge. And it's, it's just his way of bringing us to activity. I don't want us to go around 8. I don't want that 8 30. Let everybody be home. I'll be done. I'll let everybody go to be home. Acts chapter 3 is a long reading from verse 17 to 26. We want to see the layout. Somebody is saying that, but Jesus is here. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I, I've said I will not watch American film again. Because that's where lust comes. If you watch Nigerian film, even if you watch, you, you watch Yoruba film. Now claim that you not watch Yoruba film again. You watch Igbo film. Because there's nakedness in Igbo film too. I mean even traditional Igbo films, there's nakedness there. Because the way they dress and just tie a pan, tie something at the top, there's nakedness there. If that's what weakens you, your consecration will still be weak. Are you with me? So, uh, if he says, and that's what we're going to do in the second one, and that's the indwelling. If he says don't watch film again, it means that's the way to be free. But if you decide I will not watch film again, it means you are still trying to achieve the righteousness of God by yourself. It won't work. You can't choose what you will do. Man, it's beyond a man to choose consecration. They give you. Are you with me? Say I'll be fasting five times a week. You'll be teen and you'll still be sinful. <laughs> ah, I, I, well, I, I hope that this my lines are answering many questions that I get online. So I'm struggling. You say I, I decided to fast for 100 days that I will not masturbate again. Inside the 100 days, if you are sincere, there are times. And then when you now finish the 100 days, it's like your body went on, on vacation. You now resume work. And for the next one week, it will be like four or five times every day. That's why you come exasperated and you make statements like, God cannot use me again. I want to die. You will not die. The problem is that you could not save yourself. He saved you. Now you have come into the economy of life and you, you now want to use effort. You want to put at naught the, the cross of the Christ. It doesn't work that way. The one who saves is the one who keeps. Oh, the apostles understood that mystery. You remember that my old sermon? It is unto him who is able to keep from falling. If you see any of us standing, it's because he keeps us. I'm not trying. I'm just yielding. For what a fellowship, what a joy divine in on the everlasting arms and oh what blessedness and oh what peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms so leaning I'm leaning safe and secured from all alarms leaning I'm leaning I am leaning on the everlasting arms for oh how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way leaning on the everlasting arms oh how bright the path goes from day to day leaning on the everlasting arms i'm leaning i'm leaning so safe and secured from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting that's the 
any survival strategy you must come leaning it's a good place to round up tonight let me just read from Acts chapter 3 then we come back to read this to, to sing this song and we close the reality for this week is that we press to obtain in experience that which the incoming Christ came to occasion is the wonder of conversion you will find the part of, of asking Lord help me Lord help me Lord help me you came in to help you came in to help so help me and progressively you will see the things that you have battled with lose their power you can't win but he has won <laughs> and now brethren I want not that through ignorance ye did it as did your rulers speaking of how Jesus was crucified but those things which God before had shoot by the mouth of all these prophets that Christ should suffer he had so fulfilled let's go repent therefore maybe I should stop here the, the apostles in trying to demystify what happened at Pentecost and by extension to make people know that by the labors of the Christ it was not just for the 120 it was something that everybody was supposed to be sucked into the gift of God that came at Pentecost was for everybody that believed they beckoned upon their brethren and said to them repent ye therefore what does he mean to repent because he said repent ye therefore and be converted what that line means is that when a man repents you have finished your human labor it's like put rice on fire put rice in water put it on fire and sit what will happen the rice will boil do you know how rice boils you know how the cells inside the rice grain used to swell it's at the mercy of the fellowship of heat and water if you sit long enough it's going to boil man's participation when christ comes in is to meet the incoming christ with a posture of repentance because he comes on the wings of conviction he informs your heart that you are alienated from god he informs your heart that your life is disaligned you are supposed to meet him with a dimension of the sorrowfulness of heart that says lord you didn't make me like this i want to do what you want me to do true repentance does not end with i'm sorry it continues into i am willing Yoruba say that repentance and I love that word it is called Ironu it means nobody repents until they have engaged rational thinking am I supposed to be lying by the information that comes from the word of God you have seen that a liar has no future you, you have marked all those things together and you come to a conclusion that Lord this is not how you made me my lips were supposed to bring forth truth I choose truth but immediately you say you choose truth you should know that you cannot speak the truth because we are not positive speakers I choose truth I choose truth I choose truth that's what some people teach I choose truth that if you say I choose truth long enough you will speak truth one day if you sit down and think through your I choose truth I choose truth you will see that even your I choose truth is a lie that in your heart of hearts you have not chosen truth i have met or spoken to many people it's it's many times around the the scene of masturbation the person says i'm tired i don't even like it again ah, you're lying. you enjoy it it pleasures you what keeps you going is that you have substituted the place of the christ there's a new god in your heart the name of that god is pleasure and you are willing to trade your love for the christ for self-pleasure that's your problem if you they tie your hands to the wall or they put they put they put you on a cross and you're walking if your hands can't do it your heart will still do it so you need to be exposed to truth the truth of god's word truth that makes you know that that position 
hurts a lover I have found out that love for Jesus has won battles over masturbation more than fasting if you understand the cross and that your response is not thank you your response is I will live for you even when you feel that that's the way to go your heart is programmed in a new way you by water many I'm sorry to God are thoughtless that's the problem the guy doesn't want to go to hell so I tell one of many of them why, why, why do you want to quit masturbation he says it's not good you can't lie to me with ease I say the problem is not that it's not good you are afraid that next time if you lay hands on people they won't fall it, it's about ministry they now say yes sir that's the problem people lie to you that you will not be strong if you continue seeing it there is a shape of ministry in Nigeria that in, in which the two cohabit <laughs> ah, don't, if you, it's because you have not checked far there are wicked men in ministry in Nigeria they are more sinful than their congregation I mean wicked men not seeking repentance at all and they are powerful men prophetic men mighty miracles but they are wicked so if you think if I see much I won't, be, I won't be able to do miracles no people have pioneered that part in Nigeria people are pioneered doing ministry without meeting Jesus uh, you know the story because it's possible for people to be long in ministry have large churches have many ministry songs and they can't tell us when they consciously we don't want to know a time we just mean was there a day when you consciously gave your life to Christ they said no it happened in the womb it means that ministry can run even if you have no experience of salvation if it's because of ministry you want to quit sin no forget be doing it you will meet him like that doing ministry is a cheap is a cheap reason do you know that it was love that hung on the cross why will you say no to that kind of love the Bible says greater love had no man that he laid down his life for who do you think Jesus died for friends the Bible says we were alienated we were enemies in our minds by wicked works he died for his enemies the Bible said we that were afar he has drawn nigh come on he sits on all that God has but now we are joint heirs with him he has done too much for me to continue the cross is what broke simple habits in my life so I cannot continue this way when repentance happened then I began to seek a solution because when you have repented you will know that you still cannot win your mind is not strong your mind can't quit a habit no you can't quit a habit the habit runs a technology that is superior to your mind they must have told you use another thing to once the thought comes to your heart be thinking something else uh, that something else was created in the earth everything that is created in the earth has an end when you finish thinking that thing, you will resume <laughs> uh, somebody is wondering why is he talking like that I know the path I didn't read it I experienced it but Jesus is faithful at a point I told him you want ministry take it but give me you I know that I'm still I still have a relationship with you Abby but I was saved for more than a relationship I was saved for fellowship you don't know the difference my son is not in church tonight I'm his father so there's relationship in my in our hearts yes there is a cry for daddy there's a cry for my son but you know that there's no active thing going on between us right now that's fellowship it's a different thing that I look back and I see him standing in the aisle waving I remember when I went to Katsina when I got into the house was over in the house I don't know was blessing in the house when I came back my my wife me she heard the gate she ran out it was the first time 
my son greeted me like that one of his aunties was around i don't remember who he made they open the door i was still at the small gate he screamed daddy how you see my heart caught that over be staying at home <laughs> he's missing me that's fellowship even though relationship was never broken when we misbehave our relationship with god is not touched the cross makes that possible but the flow of life which is fellowship is damned oh jesus repent therefore and when you repent be converted because repentance programs you for conversion that your sins may not be forgiven but be what blotted out there's a difference between both of them when you blot out sin it means that the operating system ceases to exist if you browse a web page sometimes because i want to check out spots sometimes i do go.com quite a lot but after a while i just feel like clearing my history so going from go.com and going to biblehub.com it would look as if biblehub.com is the only thing on your phone but if you go to history you will see go.com there are you with me so if you say you are sorry to god and he forgives you the blood of jesus is occasioned you are no longer guilty but it doesn't mean that the tendency is gone blotting out means we go to history and we click delete history so if somebody wants to type g o the only possibility you can have on that phone is google because that's the most commonly used go you can't have the other files it means the possibility of recovering that state is not there you'll be struggling to do that thing because of blotting out if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse that's blotting out and peter is saying that the protocol for cleansing for blotting out is that a man repents be sorry into a change and then you are helped to change the sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of god next verse and then we go back to that song we close this service and he shall send jesus christ which before was preached unto you this was pentecost an attempt to make public what happened in the room can you give me the last two verses of Acts chapter 3? Or last three verses? Last three verses. The Bible says, Yea, all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold these days. Next verse, Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with Abraham, our father, saying unto Abraham, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. I want to, this is the last verse I need. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. What was the blessing that the coming of Jesus occasioned? Can we read together? In turning away every one of you from his iniquities, the blessing of the incoming of the Christ does not express us only as tongues, does not express only as the, the ability to do the miraculous foundationally what it expresses as is the capacity to turn not one man but everyone into whom he comes from his iniquity it means everyone has their own allocated iniquity the one that satan allocated to them by labor But the blessing of the incoming Christ is that when we yield, He ensures that everyone can turn. Everyone. Somebody say, Everyone. You can say to yourself, I can turn because Christ came in. I can turn because Christ came in. So this week becomes unto us a week of helps. Help me look for that hymn and then we'll sing the old hymn and I will be done for tonight.
the whole hymn the whole hymn i think you should have about four verses am i right maybe three or four three eh? three good what a fellowship what a joy divine leaning on the